Welcome to the Brutally Honest Show. I am Aaron True, 2010 MMA Journalist of the Year nominee. Joined, as always, by my bro from the Clinch Report, John the King. And from MMA Prime TV, our audio video engineer, Adrian Gallegos, the Mad Hatter. <clears throat> Jumping right into things, we are going to have two huge guests tonight. We have Liz Phillips, fresh off the biggest nip slip since uh, Janet Jackson at the Super Bowl with the Reebok era debunkle. And I just got word, sound is good. Everyone, thanks for bearing with us. Once again, we're live. We've got Liz Phillips, fresh off a big UFC win, equipment error. We have Shogun Hua going into UFC 190. Huge fight, rematch against Little Nog. Coming off of two losses, Shogun needs a win desperately against his old rival. We'll see footage of him training on the video cast live from Kings MMA with Master Cordero. We also are going to talk about Mayhem being crazy on HBO Real Sports. We're going to talk about Cecil the Lion. In Zimbabwe, we're gonna talk about Kurik and Chris from the UG being on the Jim, or excuse me, on the Joe Rogan experience. I can't believe I said Jim. And we're gonna talk about the Brady Deflate Gate, random girl talk, beer, your favorite strain of the week, and so much more. Ladies and gentlemen, this is brutally honest. Oh, and the Chris Liebman arrest. Okay, so jumping right into it, Liz, uh, she's waiting for us, so we're gonna give her a call. Adrian, our producer, uh, if you could do me a favor and call in Liz when you get a second. Liz is a UFC fighter who unfortunately had a little bit of an issue the other day with the equipment. She was forced, obviously, to wear Reebok uniform, and, you know, there was a little bit of an equipment error with the uniform. I wonder if she was able to try it on beforehand or not. She currently has a 5-3 and three MMA record. She's 1-2 and two in the UFC. She just won a unanimous decision, all cards, 29-28 against Jessamine Duke in, on UFC on Fox in Chicago. This was a rematch of their previous fight in the amateur ranks in RFA, where she actually lost by a guillotine. So it was a little bit of revenge there. It's also, unfortunately, for the four horsewomen outside of Ronda Rousey, um, the... Uh, Eighth loss in a row or sixth loss in a row? Yeah, they're not doing too good right now. They're yeah, not doing too well. But so anyways, Liz Phillips, we're <coughs> going to bring her on and talk to, her, talk to her here about the win. And she also had an incident where she feels like she got robbed in one of her fights and said, I got robbed so fucking bad. I hate the UFC. That was against uh, Dudieva, I believe. Yeah, she said uh, dominating this Russian piece of crap. Oi! 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 That'll be fun. I think that our producer just uh, brought her on. We're about to bring her on right here. This is going to be uncomfortable. I'm a little nervous. Nast- Do we just jump right into it? Nastroviev. Absolutely. Address okay. the 300-pound gorilla right away. Okay, I think that's a good idea. I'm going to let you do it, I think. Ladies and gentlemen, from the UFC, we have on live with a 5-3 and three MMA record fresh off of a unanimous decision win in a rematch against a rival, Jessamine Duke, Liz Phillips. Liz, how are you doing tonight? This is Aaron True. I am doing fantastic. How are you doing? We're doing great. Thanks. So uh, how was uh, your training camp going into this fight? How did you feel going into the fight against Jessamine? Oh, I felt really good. Um, It was a pretty long camp, actually, but uh, I'm not really complaining about that because it's been like the first full fight camp that I've had in a while, and I kind of... um, just stayed in shape, uh, getting ready, uh, Julie, Juliana Pena ready for her fight, and then I went right into uh, fight camp for my fight, so it was like six months of just hard, hard training, so um, it was a pretty good camp. What's it like training with Juliana Pena? I saw on your Twitter that you were in the locker room with her, I think, before her last fight when she was getting her hands wrapped. She is really on a mean streak and a great fighter. How important is it for right. you to have someone of equal or greater talent, a female to train with? Um, it's extremely important. Um, I, I don't mind it at all because I'm constantly being challenged. Um, I, I think I've, uh, my, my talent and my skill has grown a lot quicker, uh, than it normally would had I, you know, not had somebody who I always had to, uh, train hard with and, and learn from and, and keep the pace up 
with someone like that because um, it's, it's helped me as a fighter. You know, she's she brings the intensity, and that and that helps me get pumped and ready for my fights. And um, I think we just feed off each other. It's it's really good. Would there ever be a chance that you guys face each other in the UFC? Um, I hope not. Um, I don't really want to fight my training partners. It's not, you know, we've, we've always uh, trained with each other ever since I started, and um, I've been training for four years. Um, I don't think that would be necessary. Uh, there unless, there is know, only one are... belt in that division, though. You know, there is only one belt. Correct. Correct. But what I was going to finish saying was if, if we were fighting for the um, you know, for a title shot or if one of us had the belt and we were fighting for the belt, um, that would probably going to be the reason why I would fight anybody for my camp would be because we were put in that position too. But, um, you know, if it was for just because just to fight, I wouldn't do that. Right on. Let me apologize, Liz. That was not Aaron. That was uh, Jonathan King, my co-host. He's kind of a chauvinistic pig asshole. I'm trying to start. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, you didn't let me finish. So you got you got to listen to the whole scene, bro. Yeah, yeah no, that was very rude of me. I apologize. <laughs> Unlike him, I am a feminist. I'm a hardcore uh, feminist and female WWE, WMMA supporter. And I have a question for yeah. you. I know, obviously, I don't yeah. want to ever ask you to talk poorly about your um, boss or sponsor or clothing line, but... We've got to ask the million-dollar question. You had the most popular equipment malfunction since Janet Jackson at the Super Bowl. What the hell happened? (laughs) What happened? It was the biggest – it was the nip slip heard around the world. And forgive me for saying that. That's just what it was because it was uncomfortable to bring up. But what happened? Well, oh, well, I think it just whatever happened is uh, what what you saw. I mean, um, mean, it's not – I didn't do it on purpose. It it, uh, just happened, and – uh, at first I was just like, wow, oh, I didn't realize that happened at first, but I mean, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to have to deal with, you know, pushing your bra over or having to adjust it while you're trying to fight. It's kind of, you know, distracting and there's nothing you can really do about it. Um, I've never really had that happen before, <laughs> but, um, it, you know, it really doesn't bother me. Like, uh, people, you know, might try to make me feel like I should be embarrassed or, you know, that I should be, you know, really, uh, like, this is the worst thing that ever could happen to me or something, but it's, it's really not. And um, I think it's funny because, you know, I've seen guys with big hairy asses come out of their shorts and <laughs> it's no That's big true. deal, you know what I mean? Like, and you see my, my chin or my boot come out, my nipple, you know, it's just like, oh, wow, you know, I'm not ashamed of my body or anything. I think the only people that, you know, it's kind of cool to hear, you know, people say, I should be outraged or, you know, they're sticking up for me and stuff, and that's cool. And But on the other side, you know, if there's people that are, you know, trying to make me feel like, you know, I should be embarrassed, it's usually the fat, you know, pop-bellied ass, you know, troll that's trying to make somebody feel, you know, like they should be ashamed of their body. But, you know, it happened, there's nothing I could do about it. So I guess the only thing I would do differently now is probably just wear another bra underneath. I actually kind of re- I kind of regret I did the amateur fight and they gave me the option and I said no I want to go no shirt and I actually had probably close to size C man boobs and it was pretty uh, humiliating so I didn't know the feeling. <laughs> we and- see boobs all the time <laughs> you see them on guys I don't know why you know but well I mean, lost it went a few viral and, and it was a big deal and I made I made quite a stir but you know it's it is what it is and. You know, I just I just brush it off and laugh because it's pretty funny. I wouldn't be embarrassed at all. I think that, uh, yeah. I mean, I just wouldn't be embarrassed. <laughs> By the way, was your was your uh, husband or fiance or was your boyfriend like jealous or what was his feeling? No, about? it was funny because I was I talked to a lot of people that watched it on Fight Pass and they said as the fight was going, they didn't really notice it. I'm trying and, to trying and, to just know, really ask if you have a boyfriend or if you're in a relationship. I think not. Aaron wants to ask you. <laughs> <out>. <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> All right, fine. But, uh, uh, <laughs> that was kind of off the subject, but um, yeah, he did. He didn't really. Uh, he didn't really uh, think anything of it. We both just kind of laughed about it. Let yeah, me- I mean, and, and sorry to cut you off, Jonathan, but I actually respect you for for continuing to fight because I can't stand when I know it happens, the equipment error and the equipment malfunction, I probably would maybe try to fix it as well. But in the middle of a fight, if you reach to fix your uniform, that could be the difference. I mean, right. that, that could be the end of the fight right there. That could be the difference. Right. Yeah. Well, and I, and I was, I mean, like, uh, I felt it slipping and stuff. And so I was, you know, I was on the ground grappling, trying to, 
do that and fight at the same time, it sucks, you know. And I, like I said, I've never had that happen. So, but my my instinct is to keep fighting. So, um, you know, it's silly to sit there and be like, oh my boob, you know, like, you know. So uh, that's all I could really do. I I, I hope nobody's offended by it. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, wasn't trying to uh, do it on purpose or anything. There actually, we do have a, we do have a caller who's claiming that his wife is really upset because he was babysitting and he's calling in after this, and we're gonna hear from him. Oh, God. <laughs> but, but other than that, I don't think there's any negative reactions. <laughs> now I got, I yeah. gotta commend you. It was a tough fight, and 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 you're handling this uh, this incident with with uh, great candor. It's it's really refreshing to hear. Yeah, really um, refreshing. I, I, I thought I thought maybe at least you'd come out and be a little bit upset at Reba or um, about the sponsor no, no, itself. No. Um, and, um, and I you think know, that's a really cool take. Back. Right. Oh, thank you. appreciate it. They might, you know, me to do, you know, I don't know. It, it's kind of hard to tell. I'm not blaming them for it. I'm not mad at them. Like, you know, I heard, I read some article saying that some people were outraged and I said to sue Reebok and all this <laughs> stuff. And no, I don't feel that, that didn't way outrage me. Dennis... Hallman in the <laughs> banana hammock with the training mask across the front. That, that offended me. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys see him fight this last weekend, or did you hear about it? No, no what happened? No, what happened? Oh, not, he he ended up losing his fight, but um, he fought on the, uh, our gym put on a, a really cool uh, show venue in Toilet Casino, and he fought. Oh wow! Did you used to train with yeah. Nisha Tate when she was up there with Hallman? Um, I I have trained with her for a few times, but um, when I had joined Sig Jitsu, she was already gone. She was not up there. But her and Brian used to come up and cross train, and I trained with her a little bit before her Cat Zigano fight a couple of years ago. I was in a train camp with her, but um, I never really was her teammate or anything like that. So well, I mean, she won her last fight. You just beat Jasmine Duke. There's, I mean, even though the, the women's division is one of the burgeoning divisions in the UFC, it's still really not that deep with a lot of people. Um, so right. th there are two people already that you've trained with that, you know, we talked earlier about maybe you coming across and, 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 and fighting yeah. someone that you trained with. To me, that's the, right. the women's division is the one where I see that that happening the most right now anyway. Right, exactly. I, yeah, I completely agree. There's only two divisions, and so uh, if we're all going to be in 135, that that just might happen, you know. But so, who's next um, for you? I, I'm not sure. I'm just, I'm just, I'm hoping I'm just going to be moving up in the ranks. Uh, hopefully, it's somebody, you know, that'll put me up in the head to get into the top ten. And um, you know, it's it's hard to say. They they just they just tell me when to fight, and I I listen. So. Are you still a little bit upset about the the decision that you lost? Um, I think it was at UFC 174. I forget around there. Uh, in Canada. Yes. Um, I'm not really uh, that too. Uh, I wasn't really too upset with that fight. Um, it was pretty close, and I took it on a week's notice. I I did think that I won uh, round one and three, but let um, me ask you. Let me you ask know, you a question I, about that. Either way. You uh -huh. took a fight on a week's notice. So Mendez right. just took the title fight on like 10 days notice, not much of a difference. Right. How much of a difference right. does it make? Like how how did you feel? Did you feel anywhere near 100%? Did you feel like you were no. in fight shape? <laughs> what, what is it like for tired. those of us who don't know? Well, it was hard because I had just fought down a weight class before that, before I had signed with the UFC. So I cut a ton of weight, and then I... Uh, that was on May 30th, and then I got the call that they wanted uh, to sign me and have me as a replacement for someone who couldn't make it into the country. And so I took that fight, and not having a fight camp is, you know, that sucks. And so not only was I trying to gain strength back from, you know, fighting a uh, weight class down, I also didn't get a fight camp. And, you know, so I was I didn't feel that great. You know, I had to cut weight again after just cutting like 20, 25 pounds and it was three weeks notice. So it was that, that little time period was really tough for me. Two things real quick. Melania Dudieva, I believe is her name. You have some unfinished business with this lady. Uh, she just lost to Juliana Pena, your teammate. Yeah. Uh, you have any uh, interest in fighting her again? Um, if it moves me up in the ranks. Uh, if it, it doesn't do anything for me as far as, you know, uh, moving me up, then I don't really care to again. But um, 
if uh, if it moved me up, like I said, I definitely would because I know I can beat her too. So. Liz, let me ask you before we let you go, and thank you so much again for joining us. And we're actually, after talking to you and how you have taken this whole incident, I'm a big fan of you. And just to let you know, anyone who's ever come on our show, you got to come on before your fight. Yeah, We've had people, right. three people in a row on either literally after the weigh-in or be- right before the fight, 3-0. and oh. Tom uh, Lawler, KO of the night. Manny Gambrian, KO. Uh, Chris Cyborg, 45-second KO. Yeah, we also had Benny, too. Oh, nice. Well, but he's fighting Michael Johnson. Oh, that's right. That's but, yeah, right. He, you're yeah. right. You guys are good luck, Ben. Yes, so we'd love to have you back fight oh, uh, right before your fight, and I'm going to be rooting for you definitely the rest of your career. Thank I you. Wanna know who's, Thanks, I appreciate it. You're welcome. Who has been supporting you? Like, what uh, gyms, training partners, sponsors? I want to hear about who's been helping you uh, pave the way. Oh, man, I've had so much support. My, my hometown... I'm originally from Omak, Washington, which is a uh, population of, like, 5,000 people. Wow. And I have so much support from back home. My gym, Sikitsu, with my, uh, my coach, who's amazing, his name's Rick Little. And, of course, Juliana Pena, Mike Kiss, the San Cecilia, um, and a whole bunch of other people at my gym. Uh, Marcos Lopez, Andrew Richart. Um, I have uh, some sponsors that help me that, you know, outside of you know, the cage that are still supporting me, even though they don't get to be on a banner or anything. Um, it's, uh, JRD construction, uh, the Kelsfeld side with Northern Quest Casino here in, uh, Spokane, Washington, uh, choice auto, which is, a uh, the auto industry in Omak, Washington, where I'm from. Um, you know, and I have an ind- independent sponsor that's been with me, uh, since I was an amateur. His name is Jim Hansen, one of my best sponsors ever. And, uh, of course, you know, we have Reebok now. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing great. And I, I, I'm, I am truly bre- uh, blessed to, uh, you know, have all these people helping me and supporting me. So I, I can't complain. Now, now, Liz, just remember, since you've been on our show, we gotta, we got to give you the caveat. If you ever get the microphone in your hand and your next UFC win when you win, and Joe Rogan's talking, to you, ah, Liz, we are, whoa, whoa, and he's babbling on, and he gives you the microphone. If all you have to say is, you don't have to plug us or anything. You just got to say, hey, Joe, I got to be brutally honest before you say anything. That's all you have to say, Joe. I got to be brutally honest, and you will have a mm-hmm. free venue for whatever you would like to say for life. Whenever you would like to say it for life. So it could be twenty okay. years after you retire. And you call up the hottest uh-huh. MMA show in the world and be like, "Hey, I, I want to, you know, plug my my depends that I'm getting for free right now. Whatever it is, <laughs> we will hook you up." That's awesome. Well, you you need to remind me of that right before I fight again. So make sure you guys call me. Absolutely. We Thank will. you very much, Liz. Thanks again, Liz. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you, guys. That was Liz Phillips live. Incredible interview. She is actually one of my favorite guests, I think, that we've ever had. Her Dude, she's a lot of fun, Tom man. Waller. Yeah, that was great. When you take the power out of a situation by embracing it, yep. th- what can they do to you? I, you know, all the different yeah. ways I thought she could take it, like when I was on my way over here thinking about how we were going to interview her, that's the one way I didn't think it was going to go, like completely like, ah, whatever. You know, I thought there was going to be anger. You know, especially reading some of her other posts with the, with their loss to Dieva, she was pissed after that. You know, but uh, she she's a real cool chick, man. I yeah, like she was awesome. Girl. I really <laughs> liked her a lot too. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, um, she actually said though, you know, she hadn't heard any complaints. Remember? Yeah. She said she hadn't heard That's any right. complaints, she but did say that. we actually have a father calling in. I believe his name is Mickey Serial. Mickey, you're a concerned father who actually is not pleased with the Liz Phillip fights. Uh, Mickey, you're on the air. Um, hello. How do you say it? Hello. Hey, Mickey. Um, hi. Um, yes, I wanted to speak to um, uh, Bijou Phillips. Oh, sorry. I mean, uh, Liz, um, to to ask her why, why she did such foul things. Um, how you say, my wife, after my years of addiction, affliction, she left me, then dropped me, put me, gave me chance, then left me, but she took me back. How you say, um, then after boob slip, she trusted me to watch my my baby, and he saw boob slip, and he, he shouted first word, hooray, hooray. <laughs> well, I mean, in her defense, I don't think she did it intentionally, Aaron, do you? I mean, it was... It was... No. It was Definitely accidental. Can't, hey, Mickey, hey, can't you tell your wife that it was it was a it was a no, an act of no, God? No, no. How you say? Um, you don't know how it works in in my how you say country. Um, 
but but so I wanted to ask her if she can please please call my wa- my, my my house and explain to my wife I'm not sick old fox who who, who is in porn on that fat fox. I I'm just I was MMA nipple but not not you know, my marriage now gone poof it's gone my clothes gone eviction outside gone it's no more. Um, oh, that sucks, how dude. Say, how you say how how you say can you please give me her number? We'll see. We'll see. Can we give you her number? Yeah, no. yeah, absolutely not. But we'll, we'll see if we can set something up. Maybe through social media. Maybe we can have her contact you through. So- Liz, hit us up on social media. We we got an issue here. Oh my my almost falling out of my chair. Uh, my co-host's chair just broke in half, and he almost went through the bookshelf behind him just Fat now. Ass. But uh, Mickey, so uh, you're before we let you go, you're just saying that your wife is leaving you over over what happened. She already, how you say, left. Like she's oh, gone. She's, she's, she's gone back to the old country, and now I'm stuck. Uh, not not only without without baby and uh, seven, um, how you say, pigs, uh, guinea pigs. Oh, uh, man. Uh, you need to go out and burn some Reeboks, Mickey. All right, Mickey. Well, we're going to try to get a hold of her for you. Thanks for calling in, buddy. That was Mickey, and apparently his wife thinks that he's some sick fuck, as he says, who was watching porn. And you know what? After hearing Liz talk about... That she, ha- you know, you keep fighting. You don't try to have to mess with your uniform. It's a fight. I mean, honestly, I respect her for it. And it's like she took the power and like the she was. She's not a victim. She no. decided I'm not going to be a victim about this. I'm going to embrace it. Yeah. I mean, she just seems so down to earth and Very I'm definitely refreshing. a fan of hers. And it makes sense that they're all similar vibe. Uh, her, Misha, and Juliana are all pretty similar, pretty cool, down to earth chicks. And and the messed up thing is, if you look at her record as a fighter, she, I think she's five and three, correct? Um, but her record, her last two fights um, before this one were both split decision losses a month apart from each other. Wow. So e- she could easily, easily have only one loss on her record and be right behind Misha Tate <coughs> in, in line for this title. And, Absolutely. And she's, a tough, she's a tough lady, man, real tough. I can't hear anything. You're fine. Yeah, she's definitely a solid performer. <laughs> Clinch's headphones, I think, went out. I think I accidentally unplugged something yep. from him. But anyways, uh, moving on. So we're going on to UFC 190 with Besh Carrera against Ronda Rousey. Clinch, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Okay, sorry about that. Can you do it? Can I hear you? Check, check real quick. Check, check. Okay, one, perfect. Two. Yeah. So anyways, moving on to UFC 190, Ronda Rousey versus Besh Carrera. Besh. Does Besh have a chance at, in hell at, in this fight? <sighs> I say no, you know. I I, I don't I don't think she. Uh, I mean, what is she going to do to win? She's not going to knock her out. She's not going to submit her. I mean, what what is she, she going to take her down and ground and pound? I mean, what options does she have to win this fight? I just in in 2015, I find it really difficult to believe that one person can be that much better than the next person in any division in fighting. I agree. In you know my my. My brain and my heart are both saying Ronda's going to destroy this girl, but there is something inside of me that's saying this chick might land something right away and make it at least interesting. I, I don't know. She just started MMA a few years ago. She's a tough cookie, though. Yeah, dude. she's tough, but who has she beat? Jessamine no, Duke and no. Shayna Baszler? That's what I'm saying. I agree. Ronda on paper should mop the floor with her, but there's just something about the way she's coming at her that impresses me. She's, she does. There's some, she's coming at her like a pit bull, just like her nickname says. She she doesn't seem to have any fear at all. I mean, I don't think she's going to win. I don't. You're saying you she is pretty like much. Idiot. Well, because you're saying I'm pretty much saying, that you're putting money on her. I'm just saying I believe in a little <laughs> bit of the hype behind this girl. Just a little bit of well, it. She, Not a lot, but a little bit. The only thing she has going for her is she's fighting in Brazil, right? And that sometimes helps a little bit, you know, home crowd and whatever. And, uh, you know, I'm going to put a... Put it out there, you know. She definitely looks much more um, muscular. You know, she looks a little bit more. Uh, she's put on some weight. Are you talking about Ronda? Both actually, both Ronda. Yeah, Ronda looked jacked. Dude. Yeah, they both looked pretty. Uh, yeah, I think that the photo is just black and white, and she's the way she's <laughs> turning and the way it's just the, f- she's the doing photo. That, that I mean, I don't think she's on steroids. The, the waist anyways, are going but... this way, but my shoulders going that way. Turn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean. <laughs> She is hanging out with The Rock a lot, so she might be on that Rock diet. You know, that's true. That's true. The Dolce bodybuilding diet. 
But uh, so you guys are so clinch. You're picking Betch. No, 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 no. So how do you see Betch beating Ronda then? Yeah, what's I mean, what, what's her the only way Betch can beat Ronda is in the first round and and within the first minute of the fight. Well, did you see her practicing those takedowns? That's a smart move to practice takedowns against Ronda because you want to take Ronda down, right? Nope. <laughs> Cue the close up on me, Adrian. Not really. Cue the close up. Hold on, let me repeat. Let's that. say that again. So with Ronda. You want to take her down. That's the good game plan to take down Ronda, right? Uh, why would you want to take Ronda down? Well, that's what I'm saying. Bitch, <laughs> she was training takedowns. Yeah, I don't know. I don't see the What's fight. she going to do to Ronda on the ground? No, the only way, she's got a puncher's chance at best, and I think she's got a decent puncher's chance because she throws freaking bombs, this girl. Well, yeah. I like her a lot and like her fighting style, and I hope she at least puts up a good fight. And do you, Ronda's saying, and I actually I think I have an article, I have a quote here. I want to get it right, and I want to quote the source. Yeah, don't misquote Honda. Okay, here we go. This is from Brent Bookhouse for MMA Junkie. He, oh, did, yeah. he did an interview with Ronda Rousey. And Ronda is talking about how she wants to prolong the fight and give Betch a real beating and not just finish quickly. And she goes, in regards to her mother, she doesn't want me to, said Rousey, as transcribed by Brent Bookhouse for MMA Junkie. She chewed me out. Or let me, should I do this in Ronda's voice? Can you do Ronda's voice? Yeah. yeah. She chewed me out. <laughs> she wants me to end it as quick as possible still. I promised her that I'm going to be fine. I'm not going to take any damage. If it goes any longer, it's just because I'm punishing her more. I'm not going to purposely not finish her if I see something, but I will drag it out and make the finish more exciting. Wow, and I, I had my eyes closed throughout pretty much that whole thing, and I, I could have sworn Ronda was here. I know. We should have actually promoted that Ronda was live on the show. I didn't know I could do a dead knock-on for her voice. That was crazy. That would be cool. And in regards to what she's saying, people say this is bullshit all the time. I swear to God, no one ever believes me. When Ronda, or excuse me, when Chris Cyborg trained under a certain coach at one time who she may or may not still train with, he had her practicing carrying a fighter. When they trained rounds, he would say, Chris, carry her for the first two, third, put it on her. And he was having her, he's like, Chris, Chris, when she would start destroying the other girl, Chris, Chris, come on, remember, remember. So to say that fighters don't carry someone if they're truly dominant, it can be done. And I think maybe Rousey has seen some of Cyborg's style and the punishing, grueling style maybe wants a little bit of that action. I don't know. I, maybe I'm crazy. But so in, my, in my opinion, though, you see a finish, you take it no matter what. Anything can happen in a fight. You Absolutely. can get cut. You can lay it on your shoulder like Mark Coleman did against uh, Shogun. Right. I mean, the lights could happen. fall from the ceiling, and, and the fight has to end in a fucking split decision, in a no contest now. I, I, El Chapo could show up and shut down the shit. Absolutely. I, I will Chapo, say that Chapo. Betch is, uh, well, one thing so, I do like about uh, Betch is, uh, you know, her combinations, once they keep going, you know, that could overwhelm Ronda. I mean, they don't have much power behind them, but, you know, what she did with, uh, I believe it was uh, Baser, she, uh, she overwhelmed her a little bit towards against the cage. I mean, that was one thing I can see that happening in the first round. So, But that brings up a good point. Shayna Baser was still standing. Right, that's what I'm Throughout saying. Throughout that whole thing. <laughs> yeah. She couldn't finish Shayna. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I don't... Stop by. There's also, so do you think Ronda can carry the pay-per-view? Ronda originally, I, I forget who she fought. I think in her Ronda, first UFC fought, excuse me, UFC fight, she fought Liz Carmouche. I yeah. don't know if she was the co main no, event. She, she was, was co main, event. I think. In that. And she was co main a few times. Now she's moving into a headliner role. Yep. People say, oh, she can be a headliner. She did extremely well. But in the fight where she headlined against Kat Zagano, Vitor against Chris Weidman, and I forget what other, there's like two or three ginormous fights that got pulled out where yeah, there could have been pre sells. Yeah. So, you know, take it for what you will. I think Ronda could headline. Um, in the States. I don't know if she will in Brazil. I think that card's selling in Brazil because of the Nogueira brothers and because of... Well, who, uh, well yeah, but the Bench, Nogueira brothers aren't the main event and Shogun is not the main event. She's no, the main event. No, I know, event. but I think, the, I think the UFC's counting on those guys to help, you know, kind of assist Ronda. And in, there's a seventh fight. Uh, Aguilar, I think, is fighting. Jag. Jessica Aguilar. Oh, is she? Yeah, there's seven fights because I think they're marketing or banking on She's that. She's a fun fighter. Up. She's yeah. a fun fighter to watch. And Adrian, sorry to interrupt. Uh, what is your take on the fight? Uh, you know, I already With think the Nogueira selling the tickets and stuff in Brazil. Yeah, I think you know, um, Betts. They've been hyping it up with the whole four horsemen, and I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if they can. It's if that name is enough to carry in Brazil. I mean, it'll be an interesting fight, and it'll be definitely be a lot of emotion behind Betts. You know, fighting in her homeland. But I don't know if it's going to be enough to uh, to sell. Okay, so before we move on to a video we have of Shogun Hua. His English is really bad, guys, but there is some video of him training. This is an exclusive video, never been seen debuting here. Shogun Hua training. 
training for the Noguera fight in the United States with Master Cordero. Once again, his English sucks, but it is Shogun Hua and him training. So we're going to cue that up, and Adrian, give me the thumbs up when you're ready, and I'll cue it in. I don't know who you guys and got in this one. I got 50 bucks on the Brazilian. <laughs> well, I have Shogun. So, and ladies and gentlemen, Shogun Hua exclusive right now. I'm very happy because uh, Master is my coach, the white belt to black belt, my tie. I'm very happy because he's know my game. And uh, here I simulate more my Muay Thai, and uh, Muay Thai is my preferred martial arts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is a long time I remember the box, it's good memories. And uh, I'm very happy for here. And look at this, this guy, he's a good fighter. I'm very happy for this fight, he's very good, he's an eclectic fighter. But I'm very happy for this fight, I'm very happy. Yes, I'm very happy because I have fans out of the world and uh, these fans, they have energy for me, for turning hard. And uh, my more motivations is my fans. Thank you very much for my fans. I see the same way the first one. Big Little Nog is such a good guy, such a good fighter, but Shogun is prepared for everything. He, his game, he developed a lot of his game here in the United States. We want to prepare him for war, and uh, for sure it's going to be a tremendous fight, but we believe Shogun can beat Nogueira again. I'm very happy. So that's pretty cool. That's an exclusive look in the Kings of MMA, Shogun Hua, training with his original master, Master Cordero. This is a recipe for victory for Shogun. He has the same master and coach that he had when he was at Shooter Box and when he was at Pride, when he was a Pride champion. The same coach he went back to when he had a huge KO victory. And um, hold on, sorry about the noise, guys. That's my co-host eating Starburst uh, with the rappers there on air that you're hearing crinkling up. Thanks a lot, Clinch. My bad. So anyways, uh, what do you think about Shogun? How do you think he looks? I think he looks great, dude. Uh, the problem with Shogun is you can't see in training the chin. I don't know how well he's going to hold up. Uh, his chin's been the issue, you know. Um, he's a great fighter. He's When he's on, he's one of the best in the 205-pound division. By far, his Muay Thai, his elbows, his overall game, he could submit you from the bottom top. He can take you down. He's an overall stud and has been forever. But when granite fractures, you can't tell, you know. It's just like Chuck Liddell. Even when Chuck Liddell took it seriously, he came back, and there was always that thought in your mind, if someone touches that granite chin, there might be fractures in it now. Well, do you think that Shogun has taken equal knockout damage to that of Chuck Liddell? Chuck Liddell had the Rashad Evans knockout, and I think he was probably never the same after. Or was it Rampage or Rashad Evans? It was both. Yeah, he, but who he, took he, his title? It was Rampage, I believe. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was too. Yeah. But then he got KO'd bad, remember, by Rashad Evans? Afterwards, yeah. Yep, he got yeah. KO'd by Rich Franklin bad. Oh, I th God, I, I think about that. I but mean, he was yeah. never the same. Like, those were, the, I mean, the, the, those the, were big knocks. The knockouts. granite was already fractured when, when Franklin had Yeah, I think, and Shogun's more of a lot of wars. The, and he's only 33 years yeah, old. He's, that's what I was going to say. But he in fight time, he he's like 44. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? In fight age, he's, he's I mean, he's been I, fighting since he was, what, 17 years old in pride? Yeah. And yeah, then let me check my stats real quick. So he's 22 and 10, but he's lost six of his last nine fights. Yeah. He needs to win bad. He's lost two of his last three. He's lost two in a row. He, he's beat Little Nog before. He, can, he is quicker than Little Nog. So in that, what I mean by that is he will beat him to the punch. I think that if they get into an exchange, he's going to stay tight and not throw a lot of looping. Like you're used to seeing him throw a lot of hooks and looping stuff. I think you're going to see him go more with some tight hooks and straight punches and see, try to beat him to the punch and land a huge punch right off the bat. I disagree with you completely on this. If, if, if I'm Mauricio Shogun, who are the only way I see little knock having any kind of, any kind of advantage at all is, is he's got really good boxing, right? Exactly. So if he's got really good boxing, I want to take that away from him at all aspects. I either want to grab him in the clinch or I want to get him on the ground. Uh, I know he's good on the ground too, but he is not as good 
as Shogun is on the bottom as Shogun is on top. And if Shogun can put him on his back, get on top of him, start raining down those shoot the box elbows, it could be an early, early night for Little Nog. But why stand and, and trade with a guy when you know that that's like kind of what his his strength is? You know, he's got a chance there. I, I just think the one thing that Shogun uh, people forget is his leg kicks. Yeah, right. His leg kicks. He, I think he's gonna take out that front leg, and then he can go he can go up high anytime. You know, and, and knock him out that way. Um, you're right, though. If he does take him down, he, you know, he can definitely uh, land elbows. But also, I, I believe in the clinch. You know, he's amazing, right? So those elbows yeah. in the clinch, that can do some damage as well. As long as he avoids the uppercut that boxers tend to do whenever they're in the clinch. Um, you know, as long as the spacing's correct, and I'm sure it will be. Uh, he's with Rafael. How long, how long has he been with Rafael now? How the, Forever. What, this guy's talking like an expert. What the, what the fuck expertise do you have on this subject? On anything <laughs> to do with shoot a box fighting style, uh, Adrian? Yeah, just so people know, I, think yeah. you, don't think you're just some kind Where of schmuck. Where did you train at shoot a box? Where do you train again right now? Yeah, yeah, I might have trained at shoot a box. So yeah. So we have <laughs> we have a guy who, if anyone knows about Shogun's fighting style, it's Adrian right here. Yep. And yeah. Uh, so his original master, um, Rafael Cordero, who he went from white to black belt in yep, Muay Thai with, is, uh, his, who is with him now. And Adrian, like you said, what in terms of the clinch, do you think he has an advantage in the clinch? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the one thing that, you know, one thing we learn a lot in shooter box is, is definitely the clinch, throwing elbows, you know, throwing elbows at, at, at full, you know, power. There's no, we're not trying to, you know, Touch the lingo and touching. We're not trying to do patter, pity pattern. You know, we're trying to land the elbow to cut him up and knock him out. So, and and that's the point I'm trying to make. If you know little Nog, what's the one thing you know Nog's going to throw right away? First a of left, all? a big left hand, a jab. He's going he's well, to he's gonna throw a jab. He likes the straight left yep, as well. Yeah, exactly. But he, he's he's southpaw. You're right. So I mean, he he starts off with a jab, duck under the jab, take him down, elbow, elbow, elbow. Early evening. That's the way I see the fight actually going. I, I just because you know he's going to start off with boxing, and and what's what's the best way to counter boxing is put him on his ass or leg know? kicks, leg or, kicks or leg kicks or leg kicks. That's true. Yeah. Or if you're just faster and just beat him to the punch. That's true. That's true. That is risky. But remember, Shogun's a guy who, it's like you know the shooter box guys. They don't. It's not about the win or lose. It is obviously you want to win, but yeah. it's it's about the show. They this call it. It's about put on big show. They don't want to go. He doesn't want to go in there and play it safe. No, he's yeah. not going to play it safe. He's not going to. And he's either going to get knocked out or knock him out. And right. this is listen, and it's in Brazil, his yeah. hometown. It's two legends in Brazil, but make no mistake about it, boys. In my opinion, this is a loser leaves town match. Mm, Whoever know. loses this fight, I do not see fighting in the two hundred five pound division in the UFC again. I really don't. I don't know. I mean, you think they're going to let go of Shogun and have for for him to go to Bellator? His name is still. You know that's what happened with Wandy. Wendell is not letting let go because yeah, they'll I mean, shelf him. I think. Yeah. I think they would shelf him and just put him in early retirement. But uh, I mean, Shogun's only thirty three years old. Yeah, I just and I, he's a name. I mean, you could have him on. You could always have him give him a lot retirement. Of damage, and you know, Dana White doesn't like to see legends take damage. You that know? is true. That is true. He wouldn't mind Vandalay getting damaged right now. No. <laughs> oh, can we get into that? Okay, so yeah, speaking about can we that, get into that. Speaking about yes, please. Speaking about that type of stuff. Uh, well, yeah, we haven't talked about that on the show yet. Kind of this episode. Okay, so let's talk. Let's mention that Vandalay is being sued for ten thousand dollars by the UFC for basically his comments and videos he's releasing, bad mouthing them and saying they fixed fights. I believe, Jonathan, you know a lot more about me than this on this subject, so take it over if you would. Yeah, the the, the from what I read, oh shoot, uh, from what I read on a, a couple of the websites, I, I I would source them guys, but I can't remember off the top of my head which one it was. Um, might have been, I think it was MMA Junkie actually. Um, they, they, the source had said that uh, Vanderlei was being sued for around ten thousand dollars, and I don't want again. I can't remember the source, so please don't. If I misquoted, I'm sorry. Um, and 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 the amount of money by the UFC seemed trivial for me at first. I was like, wow, they're being really petulant going after a guy for paltry ten grand. But if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense as far as the UFC's products concerned. Because Vanderlei's made accusations that go against the product that the UFC puts out. He said that the UFC has fixed fights and he has proof. Now the UFC is suing him. He has to come up with that proof. What does that do to the integrity of the sport and gambling, which is basically the sport revolves around gambling, legalized gambling, but it revolves around gambling. If there's not people that want to bet on the sport and money going into it, people invested interest into it, it doesn't exist. I'll address and the, the commissions w can't get involved as absolutely. well. Absolutely. I'll address the gambling issue first. The ga First of all, the UFC has made 
you gotta you may disagree with the UFC or a lot of Zufa zombies out there always bad mouthing them, but they are the ones that legitimize the sport. They are. They're the ones that made the sport on betting cards at the Mandalay Bay in the sports books around the world. Before that, you couldn't bet on the UFC because there was no freaking guarantee in the matchmaking. So now there is a guarantee. There are still events out there, still top-tier MMA organizations like 1FC that you cannot bet on in Las Vegas because the matchmaking is not vetted. So the UFC basically created this, and that's the only move that they can make. In order to protect that, they have to protect their own product. So if someone comes out and says, I have proof that you are fixing fights, that puts that whole gambling thing at risk. And the UFC, you know, some people are like, you're going after Candlelight for $10,000. It's kind of fucking bullshit. But listen, it's the, it's the only thing they can do. It's the smart move. That's their product. you got to protect your baby. You know what I mean? You can't, you can't let someone go after your baby, especially when your baby has produced what it's produced. There's that whole booking that you, that you mentioned you know, if you if if the UFC is is illegitimized right now, say goodbye to gambling and and mixed martial arts. All right. So, what do you think about the Chris Levin arrest? There hasn't really been any any info that I've seen released about it. So, do you know anything about that, or do you want to talk about that, or do you want to talk about the mayhem incident? Yeah. Well, I think we should maybe wait till the facts come out more on that. Yeah. He was arrested. About, first of all, the thing about and I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you no, off. Go ahead. Um, the the way I look at Lieben is it's it's an issue between him and his wife. Um, it's really not news until it's all both sides are heard. So right now it's kind of a little early, and 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 either way the outcome's going to be sad. So it, it 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 to talk about it only would do damage. You know what I mean? It's so a lose lose scenario. This son of a bitch put it on the goddamn sheet. I sent the notes for the show, and he goes, "What about Chris Levin getting arrested?" Then I bring it up, and he tries to sound like the good guy. Like, oh no, no, that's the guy's personal life. We gotta hey, wait. Someone's got to play good guy, bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's sandbagging son of a bitch. I, I'm ready to talk about it, but we, no, I kidding, just want to wait until all it. the facts are yeah. out. You yeah. know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Until then, it's just damaging. But you know? I, I will say, oh, okay, so I was going to say one thing. Uh, the month before that, he got stabbed or already by his ex on, on tw Instagram or Twitter. He was talking about how he, was, he got beat up by his uh, by that his ex wife. Yeah. So and, that's and another thing I heard. He also said everything was fine on Twitter that they're still together and not broken up. Yeah, right. another thing I and heard he's was allowed the, to host his radio show and he's out of jail. Yeah, the, uh, the, another thing that confused me is the gun that he was supposedly arrested for is hers. So it, 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 that's another thing that I heard that's confusing. So and, until he comes out and she comes out and, and talks yeah, about it's it, it's all kind of weird. Yeah. But something though we do know is legit because it's on video. Did you see Mayhem Miller on HBO Real Sports? Oh on the God. domestic violence issue. Oh, my God. He looks out of his mind. He's drinking it. He starts chugging a champagne glass, chugs it, then just throws the glass and shatters it. He goes, hold on, hold on. Just, or I don't even think he said hold on. He just got up and walked away mid-interview. He sat down like 20 feet away on the porch and started taking bong rips. Uh, it, it, I, he made them wait there half the day till it got dark out. I mean, it was the most bizarre fucking thing I've ever seen. And then... Uh, in terms of domestic violence, he goes, domestic violence? Hi, 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 MMA. I mean, it, what do you take of it? I, I, I just think it's a stick. I know that people are not going to believe it. They think it, he's truly crazy. And that's from experience because we, we've dealt with him and know him. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think he, he's doing this to get his name out there. You know, I, I honestly believe that he's not, you know. That's just mayhem. I don't think he's uh, he's lost it or any of that. I mean, I know the whole incident with the church thing was misunderstood a little bit, and uh, you know some of his prior incidents. But I believe it's just uh, to to get some eyes on him. So it's unfortunate, and actually, there is an incident that I know Clinch wants to talk about. Oh, there about you go. Yeah, there. Well, yeah. well, but well, before we get into that, I just want to say my piece for all the shit he's been accused of, and in the past convicted of, all the horrible things said about him, all the horrible things he's done, blah blah blah. My experience with him is he's taken the time to give me interviews. He's helped me with my career. In terms of training MMA at Kings of MMA when he was there, if he saw a kid in the kids class, he's in the pro class paying percentage of his purse to be there. He's getting the top instruction. He sees some kids in the kids class when he's getting changed, and he walks over and he goes, hey, no, kid, come here. And he's showing these kids how to throw the punch properly. He doesn't have any obligation to do that. Right. When I was training for yeah, my amateur I, fight, I've heard a lot he of good sees me, about him too. he was giving me advice, helping me. It, it's so it's it's tough because when he's on, he's the best teammate in the freaking oh, world. I, I believe but it. when he's off, God damn help him. You know, God well, help see, him. See, that's the thing. He's, but, he's been in the off switch. He's had the off switch in that position for a long time yeah, now. Yeah, that's and, unfortunate. And, 
And the sad thing about it is, honestly, the only person more irrelevant in this sport than me right now is Jason Mayhem Miller. <laughs> and 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 I, I say this I say this with with virtually a tear in my eye. I say virtually because there isn't any, but virtually there is one there because I used to freaking love watching this guy fight, dude. I I was a huge, not only mayhem miller the fighter but like the person i thought he was really cool i liked how he freaking adopted the whole persona from brad pitt and the and the whole you know but fight club you know i thought it was cool you know <laughs> he was a cool guy he was he was refreshing he was what our sport needed you know what i mean but for him to do this and and to end up going about it, it, it's just bad it's 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 like he's addicted the only thing he has left is twitter but you know? before this incident with hbo sports happened there is another incident that turned you off, unfortunately, to Mayhem. Yeah. And you you were a huge fan of Mayhem. You, in a sense, looked up to Mayhem. You respected him. You admired him. And then all hell broke loose one night at the Commerce Casino, and all hell came crashing down. What happened? Yeah, I was actually... My cameraman, John Walsh, was on the, on the ring, so I couldn't get... Uh, um, Shout out, Walsh. What up, Walsh? Uh, I couldn't get um, a, a video interview, but I wanted to get some quotes because the um, he had been just finished the Ultimate Fighter or whatever a couple months earlier with Bisbing. His fight, he was still pretty relevant, and I wanted to go get a couple quotes from him or you know a couple sound bites mm -hmm. on my recorder. And uh, as I was making my way over there, I walked into there was a confrontation between him and some girl. And, and uh, wait, recorder, you play the skin flute? Yeah, I do actually. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, fucker. <laughs> I'm gonna finish my story. Yeah, or? sorry. All right. <laughs> so as uh, Mayhem came, as I came walking over, him and uh, this girl were getting into it, and um, Uriah Hall actually came between the girl and Mayhem, and he was he was kind of trying to be, you know. It seemed to me like Uriah Hall was a Mayhem Miller fan, too. He was like, come on, man, stop, you know, please, you know, go, go what, stop. Just to put, paint a picture for the audience who aren't familiar with Uriah Hall, what ethnicity is Mayhem, and what would you describe, what tone skin would you describe Uriah Hall as? There's a good reason I didn't see Uriah Hall, because it was very dark in, in the ballroom, and, and Uriah is a very dark-skinned man, and he was wearing dark clothes. Very dark, very dark-skinned man. Jayhem... Jason Mayhem Miller is as white as they can be. I believe he's from, like, Georgia Cracker White. And so, what did he say to you, Ryan Hall? Um, well, Don't they, say the actual word. No, they, 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 there was some arguing going back and forth. And, and I will say this, too. When there was nobody between them, there was arguing going back and forth. Someone gets between them to try to break it up. As soon as someone gets between them to try to break it up, the beer muscles come out. And uh, Mayhem started screaming at Uriah, you're a bitch ass. N word. N word. Your bitch ass. N word. Must. I mean, he said it like three times beforehand, and then the argument started, and then he said it again. So it was. It, he must have said it four or five times. Wow. And um, after the the last one, Hall responded with a a right hand. And all hell broke loose. And all hell broke loose. But the weird thing about it was, um, these two huge shares. <laughs> I, like, hooked Uriah Hall's left arm as he threw the right hand to try to, like... Because Uriah Hall had just won the Ultimate Fighter. And, and you know, he, he Dana White was huge on him. So he's got a lot of risk here. So I hooked his arm, and I was trying to prevent him from getting in any trouble. And the, I, the crippled clinch was holding back Uriah Hall, UFC fighter. I literally, dude, like, like I was a, like I was a, a freaking <laughs> feather. He lifted me. I was like a bitch in his arms. Like, there was nothing I could do. Nothing. So anyway, two sheriffs, like, freaking slam tackle him into an elevator. So there's two huge sheriffs, Uriah Hall... And my 145-pound ass attached to Ryan Hall's arm going, please don't, please don't. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty comical, actually. Uh, um, I, I hope Uriah doesn't hold anything against me. I was just trying to keep him <laughs> from getting in any trouble. All right, I, so I admire the moving, guy. moving on um, after that incredible, incredible story. And for, those who, for those who, who haven't, sleeping. for those who are awake now, if you want to, you can look them on YouTube. That actually really happened. Yeah, it there, did. It's on video, yeah. and you can see the whole thing. It's a real story. Mayhem, calling him the N-word, and then starting a fight. Moving on to Gawker. 
What's on Gawker? Gawker is being sued for like 100 million bucks by Hulk Hogan for oh, exposing the Hulk hog. That's right. And now I think they exposed that he supposedly was using the N word. So, uh, hey, when it comes crashing down, when it comes crashing down, it hurts inside. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how, how did. That's crazy. So Gawker was the one that released that, that footage? Well, he was well, banging I, uh, Bubba the yeah. Love Sponge's wife. And in they, Bubba's bed. Well, yeah. Bubba was there watching. Here's the deal, hoodie. Supposedly, he's jacking off on the thing. What the hell would Macho Man think about this? I oh, mean, God. I, I mean, Macho, Steamer, Ric Flair, they're all probably freaking... Well, Macho's gone now, isn't he? He's dead. Well, hold on. Hey, yeah. guys, we have a call on line six. We have a call on line six. It is Randy. Randy, you're on the line. <laughs> I know one thing, and I know one thing only. Terry was not a racist. <laughs> Wait a minute, Macho, are you calling us from, from the beyond? I am never die. So you say I, Terry's not a racist? Terry, uh, come on now. I was tanner than shit, and he never said the N-word to me. <laughs> Do you, what did you think about his hog on the video? All I know is the mega powers got things done. We were banging chicks and snorting rails. How did how did Terry how did Terry treat the junkyard dog? He only didn't like Sergeant Slaughter. The junkyard dog he ate for breakfast, but he's not a racist and both suck my balls. Uh, rent. Can we get an oh yeah before you before you leave? Oh yeah! <laughs> oh my, oh my god, god, that, that was, was awesome! Great. Macho Man Randy Savage from the grave. That was incredible. See, I used to I was a huge listener of Bubba the Lunch Bunch, and when these these latest racist things came out, like the conversation that he's having with his brother, his son in jail. They are totally in PLS vernacular. Been, where the hell has he been? He was on Howard 102 or something. No, he, that. He, I haven't heard yeah, in he, years. I think he's got his own network now. Bubba's the man, though, dude. That I, show I, I, is I used fucking to listen awesome. to it. So what happened with the thing with the son in jail? I don't know, but it's totally oh. in Bub. It's and in, he just you know it too. he just framed the he just got his lawyer just he's claiming his lawyer just got framed for DUI or he set up a lawyer. I heard this crazy you'll, shit going you'll, on. You'll totally know exactly what I'm talking about if you listen to Bubba's show because the conversation he's having with his son in jail. It's about how, like, we're going to move you to this different area, but they're, they're apparently all blacks in this area. And he's like, he's like you know, there's uh, all uh, blizzes up in this, you know, like, blizzies up in this plizaz. And that's totally Bubba the Love Sponge speak. They would always be like, yo, can you hand me a blizzy on the klizak? You know, and, and they would, they're totally using the vernacular from the show. I was reading, like, the jail room transcriptions, and I, I could have sworn. I was like, where the fuck is Ned? You know, like, uh, here's the deal, you know. It sounded like I was watching the Bubble Love show, Sponge show. It was hysterical, dude. But that guy's a hot mess, dude. He can't do anything right right now. We have a, we have a couple more topics Uh oh. to discuss uh, before we move on or before we finish the show. We're going to talk about the hunter that took down Cecil the Lion. But before we talk about that, I love hearing you talk about the prison story. Or excuse me, the prison break in upstate New York. There has been a breaking development. Have you seen it, gentlemen? Have you, have you seen my pants? <laughs> the breaking development is that she supposedly was giving the guy blowjobs, and the prison guard who helped the guys escape. She was giving one of the guys blowjobs, and she said, oh, I was scared, and that he would come by with a coat on yep. that had a hole cut out and make him... Make I have my pants in that same fashion right now. There's a hole so I can get <laughs> handies just from one uh, old fashions, as they're called. Nice. She's, I'm standing she's there. facing two and a half to seven years. She is guilty. She has sentencing Good. and can't do bail. What do you think about her? She's at, she's doing a hard time. What do I think about her? What an idiot. How desperate were those two guys? Can you imagine she like, how bad, the, pictures of her well, how bad well. do you want to get out of prison if you're telling that chick you want to bang her? Hey, man. Whatever Adrian, I'd bang you before I'd bang her. <laughs> well, apparently he had a huge hog, so you know <laughs> that's that's you know that helps, right? So he was he treated me with respect and kindness. <laughs> how, Shut up! How bad is that husband? <laughs> Dude, I feel so bad for him. Poor fucking son of a bitch, man. You know? Yeah, and they were gonna kill him, and he was in court today, and he had no comment coming out. What's he gonna say? Yeah, my fifty-one-year-old porker, ugly wife, like, was so desperate. That she was banging two inmates. Dude, that would be great if that's exactly what he'd say. He'd be like, 
What do you, what, what do you want me to say? You know? Look at me. I'm a fucking loser. My, look at the girl that... I, I couldn't even keep her. She's banging two inmates. How, what does that say about me? That would be fucking great, dude. She keeps her pension, by the way. What do you think about no. that? No! Yes. <laughs> yes. No way! Yes. <laughs> what do you think about her keeping her pension? That's ridiculous. Get the fuck out of here. That's crazy. I thought... Oh, wait, don't you have to work for so many years to get a pension? Or how does that work? I mean... Yeah. Or are you plea bargain under her terms of... I don't know, but they were, they were in the 80s. They were these uh, two New York City cops. I can't... They have, like, famous last names. If you look them up on Google or whatever, on the Google machine. And they were God... They, like, worked for the mafia or Gotti's family and... and uh, they went to jail, you know, for life. One of the guys, like, wrote a book before they went to jail, but supposedly they got convicted of murder and racketeering and stuff like that, but even when they were in jail, they still got to keep their fucking NYPD pensions. Yeah, That's and I, I also know former LAPD PD officers who have the same situation, and you negotiate where you somehow get to keep the pension, which I think is incredible and somewhat crazy. How can you be a thief and be a, and get a collected cop thief? pension? She let two convicted murderers out. How can you collect? And they were like, they were, I mean, mass, they, they, when they killed, it was pretty bad. It wasn't yeah. like, it was like out of emotion. I mean, these guys were one of those. Dismemberment. If anything, if anything, if I'm in charge of the pension, I sit back, start chewing my gums, light a cigarette and go, $5,000 a year. You don't have a fucking leg to stand on. Right. At least negotiate. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> don't just say, okay, yeah, you got to keep the pension. <laughs> yeah, so it looks like that for being a thief, she now gets to retire, gets a two-year vacation, and then gets a pension. Them commissary is so, going to be did, flowing. Have you guys heard about the Cecil the Lion in Zimbabwe? Uh, is everyone's talking about it, the hunting thing, the trophy kill. I mean, he basically, he lured, they lured a loved friendly lion a lion that's friendly to people or something that you can take pictures of in the in the protected park they lured it a half mile or so out of the park and then killed it well you gotta say i think a, a key word is they lured a collared lion i mean it didn't have like a microchip underneath the skin it had a fucking collar on it with a gps tracker like Oh wow! You know, and they wow. took off the collar and, and they tried hit, to hide. They the tried collar. to hide it so after they, they killed the animal. Yeah, because you know, I, I've heard of people going into Africa to hunt lions, and you know, he paid to, fifty grand a dentist. Well, you know, but but the thing is, um, I, I know it's getting you know a lot of a lot of uh, criticism because it well rightfully so. I mean, it was not the right thing to do, and it was they were poaching. However, there are people who go over there and hunt lions every once in a while, uh, and they, they you know like the white rhino, right? The whole white rhino incident. And um, they uh, they 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 do it for the right reasons. I know or legally, uh, legally. But not only that, I mean, people don't understand that the reason why they go hunting sometimes for some of these wild to cull, yeah. Because what happens is it, it could be the animal is a male, and it could kill any future. If it's an baby. older bull that yeah, can't yeah. hunt, they'll yeah. kill cubs and they'll kill their own people, and they'll start causing trouble within the pack. There right. are reason to call a herd, but never a collared lion right. that is on a well, radio. No, I don't agree with this at all. But yeah, yeah. And, and, and okay. Well, why don't we talk to the why don't we talk to the lion about it and see what the lion has to say? The ghost of Cecil the lion. Cecil, you are on. Oh shit, this Cecil, is are you there? We're going to hell. We Cecil, how you doing over there? I am actually very happy here in heaven. So you're happy? My, uh, excuse the roars, it's like a jungle up here. But I am very happy because we have in and out 24-7 and you do not have to pay. Wait, Cecil, do you like it animal style? I do, oh, and Jesus. also, <laughs> I was minding my own business when this Zentai came across and just shot me, but now I have the mirrors in the heaven, and it's nice when I'm chewing on the in and out, not to mention they play Katy Perry's Roar 24-7. Oh, wow. Mm. So you're in hell. <laughs> I, I, I don't know about jokes like that one, but I do have to say it's very nice up here. Oh, Cecil. All right, Cecil, well, we're glad it worked out for you. Is there anything before we let you go that you a message you want to deliver from up there in heaven, Cecil the Lion? 
And um, nobody knew that I was a lesbian, Ryan, and I do which we <laughs> but you, you were male. So it's next to this, because we don't have computers. A male lesbian. Someone. Love it. Bye, Cecil. <laughs> that was awesome. Cecil the Lion from Here, the grave. That was awesome. Here's the one thing that I think should change. If you, I have no problems with hunting, and like Adrian said, they're calling and, and responsible methods of hunting. And 99% of the people, don't get me wrong, that are pissed off about Cecil oh, are God. the ones eating fucking Purdue chicken every night. And right. those animals are, are horribly cared for, and you don't give a shit. So it's a big hypocrisy for most of the people. But the thing I specifically have a problem with is this animal was hit with an arrow. But and they, they found had a the bullet shot well, a no, wound in no, there as they, well, which is weird. They, they had to fucking track the thing for over 45 minutes before they found it and had to kill it with a rifle, put it out of its misery. So this it is the new rule. Kill either. This is the new rule I think should be put in place. If you want to go hunt with a bow and arrow, lions, and you get a license, there should be two bow hunters. When you draw your arrow and get ready to kill a lion, another guy across the way from you should draw his arrow and point it at you. If you don't kill that fucking lion in one clean shot, guess what? Fink! You're getting wounded, too. I don't think there'd be too many bow hunters left. Jeez, that's a bull statement. Wow. In, in terms of hunting, there's different types of hunting. There's, like, what you're talking about, an irresponsible legal hunting, and then there's responsible hunting where, say, like, something like an elk or a deer where it's extremely overpopulated. But if you're talking about an endangered species... Or something that's in a protected park. Yeah, you're really affecting the ecosystem. It was obviously they were poaching. It yeah. was not. Yeah. This and, is and not this it's is a, a crime. Total, it's, it's a, a crime. It's totally a different incident than what typical hunting is. And because of so. this, exactly. And because of this one incident, you shouldn't label the entire hunting. No, community. absolutely. That's but, what, that's but, what but, what but stuff like this is horrible. And trophy hunting is a lot different than subsistence. Subsistence. Subsistence hunting. There you go. Exactly. However, the one thing it has done is. I mean, before this, dentists had an impeccable, impeccable standing in the community. Everybody loved dentists. Now, nobody wants to go to their dentist anymore. This guy fucked dentists forever. Well, did you, you know? see what happened to his Yelp page? He's, he lost his business. Oh, because yeah, they, they, they the shut his door, door off. The yeah, front door the, of his business has a sign that says, like, we don't, we hate you or whatever. and has all these stuffed uh, lion animals. Well, they the recreated you know the scene with those stuffed animals. And you know what? I... I don't. I have a hard time feeling bad for a guy who pays for the enjoyment of killing another animal. Like I understand responsible hunting, but he paid fifty-five grand to kill a lion. Okay. However, it's not. He's not the scumbag that lured the lion out of a park. He's not the guy who who. Uh, it's hard to blame think, the locals. I think that he's, yeah, I think he's had locals, a history man. where he may have had one other shady kill in the past. And oh, like I said, I'm not trying to fucking back this guy up, but I'm saying Cecil the lion. The reason Cecil the victim? Lion is dead is because of the people that he went and it, gave money it's to. It's everybody. It's everybody involved. Yeah. He, yeah, he, yeah, pulled, yeah, the, he right. pulled the you're trigger. Right. Yeah. Or he pulled the string on the fucking bow. Like it yeah, I, yeah, and he fucking couldn't kill the goddamn thing either. Asshole. Yeah, he claimed, uh, claimed it was a graze. But, wow. yeah, so we only have a few minutes left. Uh, moving on to our final topics and burning desires. We've talked about everything. We've had, we're gonna, I'm going gonna to do, do a quick rundown before we finish up. We had Liz Phillips, probably one of our favorite guests ever, incredible personality, talking about the Reebok malfunction, her recent victory, getting back on the winning track against Jessamine Duke, probably, like we said, one of our favorite guests ever. We had Shogun Hua and Master Cordero talking about their training in L.A. We've had crazy callers. We've had a guy whose wife left him because of the nip slip. We had Cecil the Lion from heaven. We had Macho Man call in from heaven. I can't believe the ghost of Macho Man called in. We've had so many things. Cecil was a highlight for me. That is so awesome. And what else have we had? Uh, God damn. Clinch always, he always tells me to look at my text right as I'm doing the wrap up and I mess up. This happens every episode. Sorry about that. I'm an asshole. Well, you point and then you don't fucking send it till just right now. I, I actually sent it to the wrong person. <laughs> you a fucking asshole. God damn it. That's awesome. Okay, at least that's you, funny. At least it it's you, funny, so I'm not it, as mad. I sent now. it to you now. Yeah, now, after, yeah, I've, yeah. after I'm looking at my shit trying to yeah. stall. Okay, yeah, so UFC 190 predictions. We already gave our predictions. We don't give a fuck. Oh, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. No. Ronda Rousey, obviously, you chose Betch Carrera. No, I, I did not. Yes, you did. No, I did not. You, but you, I thought you bet the house on it. 
You guys are, I betched the house. <laughs> <laughs> you betched the whole house. So you got betch. No, I got we Honda. Got Ronda. Well, you have betch. I got Honda. <laughs> okay. So watch him, watch him win, and he's going to come back and be like, I told you he's guys. He's like, I told you. I, I told you guys. Do it. <laughs> I have a Shogun against Little Nog. I have uh, Jag against, is she fighting Claudia Gadella? Yes. I have Jag. Who else is on the... Who is Big Dude, Nog fighting? Stefan Struve? You know the fight on... I, I have Big Nog if he's fighting Struve. I don't know if that's who's fighting or th- not, though. There's a one fight on this card that I'm really actually excited about, and that's uh, Bigfoot versus Soa Pelea. That's going to be... Oh, against Soa the Hulk. Yeah, dude, someone's going nap time in that. You know someone's getting slept in that fight. That's going to be a fun fight to watch. Well, Bigfoot's a completely different fighter now that he's unfor- he's off the TRT. Yeah. Okay, so Struve against Big Nog. I've got Big Nog. Who you know what? I got Stefan Struve. I think I think he's going to you know keep the distance. He's so long, and I think he can jab and, and, and possibly knock him out. I think he can actually uh, finish him. So I've had the pleasure of seeing Steph Struve uh, train at Dynamics in Santa Monica under uh, Anthony Hardonk. And I got Steph. That guy's legit. Yeah, I think. Yeah, but is. he also has a mental issue where he panics and can't even walk out. Maybe he. We don't even know if he's going to show up for the fight. Literally within ten minutes of the fight. So I'm always going in Brazil. I'm going with Nogueira. I don't trust. Oh, that that's a good point. Him. He's in Brazil. The taller oh. they are, the less I trust him. I don't trust that guy. Uh, okay, Franco versus Bruno. I'm going with Franca. I got Franca. Uh, Valera against Lopez. I'll take. Or excuse me, Vera against Lopez. I'll take Vera. Well, another interesting fight: Neil uh, Magny versus. Uh, Damon Maya, I yeah. didn't even see that. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good fight. And that's the main card. There, excuse me, the main event on the prelim card. How they're doing, where they put a, usually a big fight, you know, at the end. There's also a couple other good fights. I think Tiago Alves is fighting on the prelims. Oh wow! Jay Z Calvake, uh, he's a former Strikeforce champion. Versus Pat Cummins. Oh, not Jay Z. Oh, that's a that, big that, fight. That's yeah. Fajal. Uh, sorry, I, I, that's what yeah. I meant. I said former champion. I meant Fajal. That's sorry, a fun fight too. Fajal versus Pat Cummings. If Pat Cummings can put him on that, his back. That'll be interesting. Yeah, because the both of them are really good fighters. The yeah. Prelim, those two. That's actually. Uh, why is that on the prelim? Clint like, Hester is a good fighter. That, th- there's a lot of good fights on this card. It just seems yeah, like they, they it, put the locals above some of these other guys. And they make it easy you. for you. All you got to do, all you got to do <laughs> is go on the computer on UFC Fight Pass. Then all you got to do, you got to go on Fox Sports 1. Then all you got to do, you got to order the pay-per-view and put it on the pay-per-view channel. That's it. And they make it simple. That's why I love the product. Oh, wow. They make it easy. How yeah. how you say pay per view? <laughs> <laughs> how you say three station for three different fight card? Yeah, I just don't think this is. I mean, besides Ronda, I don't see anyone. It's not really a. I think the hardcore is man. Who? Uh, no, that's a good Big card. Foot? I think it's a good card. I, I you but know. It, yeah. It is, it is in real, but you know I what? You, it, it's, I don't know if it's worth pay per view. I think it's it's a, definitely a Fox card. Uh, I mean, the only reason why is because of Ronda Rousey. They're making it a pay per view, but every, mm-hmm. I, I mean, otherwise, if this was a fight night or, or uh, Fox Sports One uh, event, I think that would be awesome. I mean, you think the UFC is kind of doing this as like a, a um, you know, like a measuring stick to see if if if, if Rousey's a draw or not. Well, I don't, they, I don't they already know she's a draw, but to like see if she's a Conor McGregor draw. draw. Well, I, know? I think they're doing it more so. Maybe in her contract, she gets pay-per-view numbers, and so she, her fights have to be on a pay-per-view so that she gets paid. You know? What do you think? Well, she no, gets paid obviously she's going to be on a pay-per-view, but in terms of making her the main event on a somewhat weak card, because normally she's been with, we're originally with the Weidman or Vitor, or there's been right. another huge fight. Yeah, she's always been tagged up with something else. But but this is a pretty stacked card in terms of diehards. I mean, it's mixed up. I mean, who knows? And then last thing before we really finish up, this is last thing. No more topics. Betch, or excuse me, Rhonda says Betch is her toughest opponent yet. Bullshit. What? We've never, I said bullshit. <laughs> we've, never, we've never heard that. UFC Embedded 3 episode came out tonight. I was watching on the way over. We've never, um, I mean, I've never heard Rhonda ever say anyone was her toughest. Everybody she fights, she's definitely my toughest opponent yet today. I think Rhonda is like the ultimate competitor and she, way, does, she takes everybody serious. That was a better impression than Aaron's. It was. No, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, I think it might have been. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> oh my yeah. God, I do sound like her a little bit. Whoa, I almost fell on my ass. It's bad luck. <laughs> okay, Please don't beat me so up. So moving on, anything you guys want to plug before we finish up here? Starting with Adrian, any beers or anything fun coming up this uh, week or weekend? Well, uh, you know, well, I have my beer now called Signal Brewery. So uh, I have, I can't really brew right now because it's too warm. But once the winter comes, I'll have some more different brews to try for you guys, and you know, we'll have some glasses and whatnot soon. So where can we see you next, Clinch? Uh, I will be at the fights this weekend, Hollywood Park Casino, Saturday night. Uh, and you can also see me on theclinchreport.com, 
We should have some. Uh, oh, shout out to Walsh. His pictures are on the cover of Muscle and Fitness um, uh, this week's edition. So check it out. It's pretty cool. Okay, and as always, check out my YouTube channel uh, under Aaron True on YouTube. Latest videos, and you can watch the full recap of this episode as well as the exclusive Shogun Hua video and interview. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Brutally Honest, the Brutally Honest Show. And that's it. Take us out, Adrian. Thanks a lot for joining us. We'll be back next week.